So, hello and welcome back to another episode of Episode 4. We've got playing with the Amla Fantasy mod, as we unfung, as we take on the Horde to the north, as they deserve it. I would clearly say. We have spawned the Renaissance in our territory, which is quite nice. But of course. No, oh, they want iron. Take the iron, I'll take money. We need it anyway. I'm gonna pay off that loan. Yeah, just my current in, uh, increase in income is mainly because of the treasure fleet, so don't be surprised by that. <coughs> there we go, go heads down. We're actually gonna do it this way around then. For fuck's sake. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of stabbing happening here. What's Tian Lu doing? They're just walking around like an idiot. Surprising, is it? <laughs> Look at them. Uh, you guys actually go here and siege that for me. And uh, not you. I, th I thought you had a small army. Whoopsie. Yeah, just a decent attrition tick, you know? Just to make things interesting. So, they are sieging stuff around here. This is farmlands. Do we want to potentially start marching an army over there just to beat these guys up? We should have, should have probably fought in these highlands, but well, that's too late now. Uh, it's actually, it's actually, yeah, I'll occupy the rest of uh, these guys so they don't get more armies around. <coughs> Just to make sure. Okay, they've, they've gotten through that, hi that highland fort, that's alright. They are splitting up their army quite well, and I'm seeing a fight happening here, and oh, you care. Just let Tian Lu do the, the, the work there. I don't need to waste my army. I'm gonna siege the stuff here, and be happy about it. I mean, this is gonna be like a, a course of one war. Oh, how many people are standing here? What the fuck? <laughs> I'm just gonna quickly desiege this. If they jump me, they jump me. They do have armies about. It's not like that. I mean, Jing Jing of course, is not helping out much here. I think they were fairly upset anyway. Uh, we are not wasting our money there. How well is this growing? This is probably growing fairly slowly. Yeah. Oh. There's someone about. Uh, fort defense discipline. Let's not let these guys do much of their fun here. Oh, we didn't even make them run. Uh, we didn't even delete them. That could have been better. Come on, guys, get this done. <coughs> I mean, the war goal is in our hands, so this is ticking up. There we go. Let's just make sure that these guys don't get uh, a pushback. I mean, I would like to send this army over there, but let's just make sure that this is all occupied. This should also not make more cause much aggressive expansion, because these guys are of the wrong religion. I mean, I guess they can continue robbing these banks, I don't mind that. <laughs> I benefit from it. <laughs> Alright, what do we want here? Uh, do we want to centralize? Not really decentralize. Or court. Favoritism. The H bonuses. Or vessel stuff. I don't think I want vessel stuff. I don't think I'm gonna have to like that many. I mean, what, does, what do I benefit here? There's an autonomy change in this one, which I think is the most useful out of all of these. There is nothing that useful. Reform progress might be useful. Cost of advice with ruler culture, and this one is disables called diet, but the loyalty loss goes down from seizing ground land. Maybe I'll do that, Royal Favoritism. I mean, uh, this one is also interesting. 
this one technique is like really good for the beginning to just go full on taxes around. You know what? I want more control over my estates. Yep, some super is over the ground is gone. Um, so we did win that, but we did also get some allies to join in. Uh, are you really running? The first second I was like, yeah, why are you running there? That seems a little bit lethal. I hope this was enough murder to spark a uh, further engagement from our uh, allies and we are fairly well on the way here i don't think i want to siege that let's make sure that this stuff is occupied just stepping in here doing our part so you're occupying some stuff for yourself could you guys fucking siege this like how difficult is that just siege it god down god damn it This is awful, I hate it. The Aegon still exists actually around here. They're allied with Tian Hmm. I mean, if we see it like that, this could be rather interesting. You guys just are gonna explore the step. We have no manpower left, but that's alright. There we go, we have done this. I think we're actually gonna leave you here because war score wise, we're nearly done actually, so I don't think I'm gonna waste more of my time. I'm gonna let uh, the allies do a little bit of work. They seemingly are jumping into these frequently. And they're losing it. Alright. I mean, the more the better. Marching down the end is out. But we should still have this one here in opening. So we are at 81%. Just making sure that I'll see all of this here. Go to Tian, go to Tian's loose territory, kill some of the guys. I'm completely right with that. I want to see them bleed. After all, 819. So these guys are up here. We have 81%. I, am I actually happy with that? Like I said, I want would these check these provinces. And these ones we definitely need. So uh, maybe we are not gonna immediately jump on that? I don't want to cause another coalition right away. This Is this actually part of it? This is a part of it, yeah. I mean this one I just want because, well, I mean technically we don't even need that. We could do something, okay yeah, I think they are a horde after all. Financially crippling them could be very useful. We don't see that much of that money. 351. Yeah, if, if we do it that way, that uh, the world is going to be a bit angry about that. But this one seems to be alright, because it also advances our missions. We could... Okay, you wouldn't be willing to do that yet, but this one would be amazing, because then we can jump on them later on, and that would be a better war. Of course, it gives us a long truce with them, but otherwise... I think that's reasonable. We are just gonna quickly go home so that our manpower doesn't suffer too much. I think the rest of the war score will be done by our friends and allies. Unless they are dropping here. 82%. I mean, this is not far away. We can leave that a bit to a ticking war score. If they want to peace out Tian Xiang, I'm also alright with that. But it looks like, yeah, this is alright. Lovely. Of course, we didn't do a humiliate rival. But that I'm alright with. So, we are in a truce with each other, right? Yeah, for a while, 15 years, but that will come around, no worries. 
So, two of those actually done. Oh, but do we want to save up the... Uh... Oh, my gummy capacity is nearly full, I just realized. That's not perfect. <coughs> this cost me 250. Is it necessary? I mean, it doesn't really bring me anywhere. So I'm not sure if I want to do that yet. As many have expected, our forces of the north have capitulated to our military might. Among our newly conquered lands to the city is the city of Yingcheng, the seat of the Yangshi that have and until now bestowed their wisdom upon the Yangqiu for centuries. Now that the dust has settles, we must now decide what to do about the Yangshi. Some of our more practical advisors suggest we allow their continued existence in exchange, exchange for their, their assistance in the continued pacification of the people of Yingcheng. Others advocate that we elim eliminate the Yangshi and their subjects to strengthen our grasp on the city. First of all, we get a bunch of flames. Let's see. The Black Chase Citadel looms over Dragon King Xingxu's war tent as the three undead emissaries cowter before him, representing each of the three Yangshi courts. The emissary from the Suying pushes forward a chest full of books and scrolls, no doubt containing writings no mortal ought to read. From the Wan Dao Chi, the emissary bears an honored porcelain and gold mask, fit for rule, ruler of Xingxu's stature, beautiful but disturbingly skull like. The Shu Di Yi have sent the emissaries with a sublimely sharp Qian, almost crackling with unseen dark energies. The three rulers of the night smile as Xin Shu reaches out to take the sword when his chief marshal intercedes, urging the Dragon King to not to touch the weapon lest he be cursed and enthralled to the wicked Yang Shi. Knowing the man to be a zealous practitioner of the righteous path, he stays his hand and turns to look at his chancellor, who is eyeing the crate of books with envy. A student of high philosophy, this is disinterested in the squabbles between the two different paths, he advocated for the Dragon King to extend the same protection and demand the same service up the left-hand path as the righteous cousins. The marshal, on the other hand, had all but demanded that Tsing Shu put them to the sword and destroy the unholy nations whose emissaries lay prostrate before them. Okay. We could just get rid of him. Get rid of the left-hand path. We could, uh... Oh, we must as well. We can't get rid of the lords and tolerate the left hand path. Or we could go for working with the Yang Chi. Imperial lords of Ying Chen, of Poding as they may be, can serve the interest of the White Dragon. Leave them and the followers alone. This will outrage the righteous path subject in neighboring countries. I think I'm just gonna go full on fuck him. Just because we're tyrannical doesn't mean that we're gonna follow the follow some dark paths. And I like stability. That's another that's another part of this, but that doesn't matter. Alright, but now we have definitely claims all around here that we could bite into. Lovely. Like I said, this one we're not gonna do right away. This probably is now no longer perfect, yep. So we would need to wait for a bit of spread. This one being the first one to finish, anyway. Well, let's get our manpower back, first of all. We could attack Kohai, which I guaranteed by you guys. So I could short truce that, technically, if I would be wild. Something else that I could do is start drilling all around. Uh, and we surely can have another yeah, leader. Because we do still need professionalism. So let's do that. We of course need to catch up on the numbers here again. As we have had some losses. But I think we gave the Duke Nukta and Sadai a decent slap. Oh, there we go. Oh, whatever. The Marshal Governing Anjiang has received word from the local microstrate in Yingchen. An underground coven of left hand path practitioners has been plotting in secret to overthrow the government using their dark and devious arts. The Marshal quickly dispatched two battalions under the command of a trusted deputy, versed the ways of both the righteous and the left hand paths. Marching through the province, the soldiers search at each hut, farmhouse, and manor for shrines of dark spirits, writings of the Oni, and other trappings of the left hand path. The people of Yingchen quickly learn that the deputy's first strings are open to reliable informants. Neighbors, friends, even brothers all fetch a tidy sum. Those who resist are purified with fire and water, burned at a stake, or weighed down and thrown into the river. Those who confess and repent are spared. However, to ensure their sincerity, they are resettled across Bianfang, 
perform 10 years of manual labor. The land, property, wives and children are all seized and redistributed to loyal citizens. Soon the deputy returns to the marshal's headquarters, leaving Ying Shen far less gloomy and far less populated. He and Feng's heavy subjects would quickly trickle into the provinces, working the earth, raising new buildings and draining to fight for the dragon throne. So we basically just lose development and gain devastation there, and religion changes. And a certain... wait a second... There's a modifier here. Who is there? Or oh, left, left hand path outraged. Boop. Or it doesn't remove that. Cool. Doesn't need to, nobody forces them. <laughs> but yeah, fighting you again would be then a lot easier now that we also have a way to do that. But I do want to get some manpower back first. Basically, at a curse expansion, it's soon enough will no longer matter as well, because we keep pushing into this. Which is quite nice. I guess we should also death up this one at some point. But we'll do that eventually. Are you guys... Okay, it's basically only this place that is still devastated. Uh, this could be a time to drop you guys. And bring them to high because they will take this away. Oh, both of these guys fight you. Okay, then I cannot help you out with that, can I? I guess I, I am mean, gonna. Damn it. I am gonna join this war. But I'm not gonna do anything for it because I cannot stop these guys from getting far close enough. Uh. Vessels? You're not doing anything. I do have some forts available to me. But I do want these guys to just take the bolt on their own. Because I will not benefit from this war either way. We will have to drop these guys and at some point find, fight this bulk over here. Anyway. I'll just power. I'll just take the prestige. And now at half. So it's. I'm wondering if, if I should take this. I mean, you still have time, still five years, four years, sorry. <laughs> to get this done. Do I just do an increased spread? I mean, this one I'm gonna wait for a little bit. Because it is just gonna make this more expensive. Yeah, I'm gonna put in that one here. Because I now kind of want this as soon as possible. Yeah, they didn't, they don't need my help here. They're doing this very well on their own. Oh, we can do some stuff. Military pensions. Perch officer core again. Conscript labor. Sponsor harvest festival. This one is fairly chunky. Cost me a lot of money, but all right. But I don't want to do anything benevolent. Okay. We could do the corvi labor. Or we just let another. I mean, this is a decent chunk of professionalism again. Or do we want more money? I think we actually want more money. Let them let them rebel. Yeah. This time we're gonna get into the mine. Because I think the to the fields is still active, right? Yeah. Or at least this is still active. Hmm. Uh you drill. Manpower is coming back, that's very nice. We also do have, yeah, we still have war exhaustion anyway. We kind of want us to trickle down a little bit. We also need to wait a little bit on the conquest because we are running out of governing capacity at this rate. And I don't think we're going to reach empire very soon. Unless this may turn me into a vampire. 
uh, empire. Yeah, this one actually turns us to an empire. So if we just, like, actually if we just do a war against Tian Lu and take Tian Lu, I guess that's not gonna happen in one war, but... Okay, about an area, trade cities of the south. And imperial capital, yeah, yeah. I guess we also need to get another thingy in anyway. Okay. Doing the same thing in... Oh, I guess there's... Wait, we don't even need to convert this shit then. Oh, well, I guess that's useful. Uh, this has been taken. I can't do anything about it. I'm not taking it ahead of time. This is far too many points at the moment. Damn it. Diplo is also suffering constantly. How many... Oh, I do have plenty of favors with you. Then you're gonna drop Jiangdu Jiang as an ally. They're too strong. As simple as that. Ah! Finally happened. Dragon King is dead. What a sad day. And now someone far inferior is in charge. But we'll take what we have. One, two, three. A new ruler! Oh. Oh, I guess, uh, so that's great. So we can issue proclamations, appoint, dismiss, banish. The government to be solidly pragmatic and neither overly hard. Okay, that doesn't do anything then. Does this reset to our rule? It doesn't, okay. I guess if we are particularly ruthless, we get some modifier? Or something, maybe? I don't know. It might be. The commander's really eating into this stuff here. But the good thing is I nearly actually come up to the strength of the command already. I don't intend to fight them uh, that soon, because I think with the tech disparity is just gonna become larger. If we just give it a little bit of time. And we're gonna make ourselves an easy war. Instead of a difficult one. Alright. Anything we want to do here? No. We could do this one. No, we cannot do this one yet. Can't do this one overall anyway. But I feel like we have a lot of developing to do, astoundingly enough. <laughs> Seems to be fairly excessive there. But the money is rising up. That's good. There we go. Oh, you didn't even take anything from Kohai, you gave that to Chengdu. Well... You guys are no longer passive. You guys do not have anything here. I think I'm gonna... Uh, with one more war against... Okay, I guess I cannot attack Nukensara anytime soon. Uh, Drusas, when would that run out? 88, so in 11 years. I know what. Go away. I have my friend. Of course, you still have unpleasant allies, but that is alright. Alright. I guess we are gonna quickly make sure that you guys do not cause any trouble. Uh, I guess we also will catch up with this when next time with horses. I mean, I guess we could have done this all a lot faster, but... Technically speaking... Who knows how well we are on time. I'm a patient man. I don't need to do anything crazy. 12k troops. I feel like I should attack you right away next time anyway. If, I, if given the opportunity. And this is still a substantial amount of uh, rebellion. Or unrest rather. Go, purge them all. Admin. I 
guess I would be willing to start getting you up to 25 for now. That might be reasonable. Oh, I did want to... Oh, God damn it. Uh, well, that's my fault. Whatever. I'll beat those guys up as well. Let's be an enemy to everything and everyone. We might have to get a loan or something to get this done. Still have this active. Uh, we're not doing a navy at the moment. <coughs> well, can, we can spend us on the right stuff soon enough. Just need to wait for this to pop in. That's the only thing. That is what we're gonna wait for before we really do anything else. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> you know what? I guess it's a stability right here. Screw you guys. That's not my problem. Okay, we would lose. And this is... No, this is not long. I'm willing to let this one trickle down. I'm, I don't need to pay 50% extra on this stuff. I don't think that's really necessary. Uh, you can stop. I don't think you're doing much anyway. These guys are still somewhat angry about me, but not crazily. Our claim centers basically around here and not up here necessarily, unless... I guess, the, I guess this stuff sends us upwards. Uh, you drill as well. Let's get a decent bit of professionalism in. Let's keep our eye on that, so we can do it as quickly as possible. Manpower seems to be clawing its way back. Oh, there we go, the command going for the National Rush again. This time actually succeeding somewhat, because the National Rush has, like, nothing. You're also fighting the Bovardi, okay. I guess we have to wait for this conflict to arise. Alright, next tick. We see how much money we need. 855. I guess we're just gonna wait for one more tick. So, with that... Seriously? Fuck your game. <laughs> They're doing all of that on purpose, obviously. So. There we do this, this, this. I guess we can just do this again. Yeah. Uh, I would actually potentially go for something like diplomatic ideas. Because I feel like we have a plenty bit more conquest on up ahead. So we can get the province war score cost reduction, the deliberation and improvulation. I guess improvulation is not that important in the end, but either way, we've eclipsed all around. Get this done. Cool. Provardi, and I guess the command at this point we also take as an enemy. Alright, we are attacking none of you guys here. I guess you probably will be the next target. But. 82. Yeah, in two years. You have Jiangju, Jianxiang, and Xiangyu on, on, your, on your side. I don't think that this will. Hmm. Can I start another war to pull you guys in? 
I could actually... I mean, you guys still have numbers. And you guys would not join that, so I guess it doesn't matter. Alright. I don't want to wait that much longer here, so I guess I'll have to fight them. You have no manpower. I could... No, no, wait a second. But then I can't do, can't fight them either way. If I just ally them now again, because then I once again do a truce, and then it takes forever again. This ruse is, of course, longer than that. I mean, technically speaking, now if we're realistic here, if I start, I mean, this war would take another eight years to pop up. But we can call in Tianxiang again for this war. And then we could fight here and Lu at the same time. That, of course, would extend us all quite a bit. But overall, is that a bad thing? Not necessarily. I'm gonna also take an admin advisor. Hmm. Oh, we can have a little bit more here. Also, would give us time to get the manpower back up. We actually have a surprisingly little amount of manpower for the amount of force limit that we have. Hmm. Maybe I'm cheating. But at this point, I think uh, 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 the expansion would no longer matter, really. Hmm. You know what? Let's do it that way. I am gonna ally these guys again. I'll see if I can break their lines of Chiangdu. Yes, good. Now they only have Jiang Xiang left basically. And um, these guys don't matter. And now I would be... I could call them in. But I think I don't want to spend the extra deploy at the moment. So. <laughs> Just extended the truce then, but that I can live with. Alright. Either way, we're gonna end this episode here. So, like always, like, subscribe, and again. So, I guess see you guys next episode. Bye!